Hi boys and girls, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be teaching you this, um, this cute little dragon bank, how to paint this cute little dragon bank. So I wanna just go over a few things with you first before you get started. You should have something to cover the table that you're on because we don't wanna get paints over things that the acrylics might not come off of. You should have a water bowl and a paper towel and your brushes that I gave you. Okay, and you set this all out. Now what you should do is take the stopper, I already did take the stopper out of the bottom, unless it's separate, actually I think it was separate. So don't put that in until you're finished because we don't want to be painting that. Um, the colors that I gave you, there's a variety of colors there. I mean, I gave you the turquoise, the blue, the purple, the red, the gold, and some white, you, and black also. This is your piece, so you can paint it however you choose. I'm gonna do it the same way I did this one so that you could see how I went about it. And I just wanna tell you a few things that you should do no matter what colors that you use. Um, what you should do first is always do your background color. Don't try to do dots or try to do the gold uh, or eyes until the very end. The little things go on top of the main colors. So what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna paint the purple on his whole body even where the gold is gonna go. The gold is over the purple. The gold is the last thing you do. Dots are the last thing you do. And then I'm gonna do the middle in the turquoise color. Those are the two main colors I'm gonna put on the piece. Now, you can change your colors. I did give you a bigger bottle of the purple because that is the color that I used for the background, so that might be a good idea if you want a lot. Um, you wanna do the main area in, in a color. I would suggest the purple because you have the most of that, unless you start sectioning it off into different you know, colors all over the place. The red also is on top of the purple. So right now, I would just put the purple on his body and the turquoise on his body. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with the turquoise color and do that middle section. Now you have them in those little wells that I gave you, the little pods, uh, except the purple. Now the purple, uh, if you don't have a palette like I have, I have a paint palette, you can get a piece of foil aluminum foil, make a little cup out of it and you could put it on there and work from there, okay? So you have your two brushes. I would work with the little uh, larger brush. Well, first I think I'm gonna work with a little smaller brush because I'm gonna be edging and I'm gonna do the turquoise first. So you put a little bit of paint in your brush and try to do the outline first, nice and neat. So you see what I'm doing? I'm putting the outline of his chest area with the pointy brush. That allows you to have a better line and then filling in in the middle. Okay, see that? So I go around his hands. I mean, if you go out of the um, area and you go onto the area where you're gonna put the other color, don't worry about it, eventually it will cover. You just need a couple of coats. And don't leave your, don't like put your colors on and just blob it on and leave it very wet like that. You need to pull your color out because otherwise it will not dry, okay? And, and when you wanna put one color over another color, you have to make sure that your first coat is dry before you do that, or you'll be just mushing the colors together and getting like mud, it'll look like muddy. So we don't wanna have that. So if you notice, I keep pulling my colors out when I put them on. Yeah, I think the smaller brush is better to do this little area here. And then I'll use the small brush to edge around it with the purple color. Isn't that a pretty purple color? That purple is so pretty. But you also have black. I mean, if you wanted to do a black dragon, you can. But just remember the color that I gave you the most of is the uh, purple. And you should always paint the bottoms too, but I would do that with the bigger brush later. I guess I painted the bottom on this one. Yeah, I painted the bottom in purple on this one. And any of the detail, the red between his feet and the dots, that's all done after the main colors are put in place. And my main colors are going to be the turquoise and the purple. So now, even though I might be faster than you, you can pause the video and take your time. You can rewind. That's what's nice about having the video and having the paints at home because you can start and stop anytime you want. You don't have to do it all in one sitting. So there's, don't rush it. You're the artist today, so you can do whatever you'd like with the piece. I just give you a suggestion, and then you do whatever you would like to do. Designs don't have to be dots. 
you could do other things on top of it. You could also, what's a good idea sometimes too is when you wanna paint something, and I'll do this also, is I'll go on Pinterest and I'll look up ceramic dragons and they'll give you ideas. They'll, they'll show you different finished painted ones and, and you get ideas from that and then you put a bunch of ideas together and make it your own, okay? So now I have the turquoise on there. Okay, so now when you wash your brush, don't bang it in the bottom of the bowl. I swish it in the water and I don't leave it laying in the water and I dry it on my paper towel. So it always keeps a nice point. I've been using this brush for a very long time doing these classes. It's really a pretty decent brush. So take care of it. So now I'm gonna go with the purple. I think I'm gonna still stick with the pointy brush right now to edge around the, purple, around the turquoise color. And this is what I mean by edge. So you see what I'm doing? I'm gonna do all the edging all around the turquoise. Then I'll switch to the bigger brush to do the, the other areas. This will give me a neater line than trying to use the bigger brush to do it. So just take your time and do it nice and neatly. And I always go back and I pull it out. Do you see all that paint? That if I just left that paint like that, that would have stayed wet for a very long time. So I do my edge with a little extra paint in the brush. And then I pull it out into these other areas here. See, now, like I said, even though this, I have red on this part of the foot, I still put the purple on it and I put the red over the top of it. And I don't have to do all that now. So I'm gonna do the edging first. Okay, switch around, I'm doing his paws. I don't know if they're called paws, but his hands and his feet. And just take your time and pull your colors out. So this is time consuming. And like I said, if you don't want to um, sit and watch me do it, you could just fast forward and go, you know, do this on your own without watching the video. This just takes time. See what I'm doing? I'm going all the way around, edging all the turquoise color with the purple. And there's no rush when you're painting. When you rush, you're not as neat as you are when you take your time. So take your time doing it. And if you get it on the turquoise color, no worries. You just let it dry and then you go back with the turquoise and touch it up. But just remember, one color over another color has to be dry first. You can't, like while this purple is wet and if I got it on there, I would wait and go back and take it off after it's dry or cover it with the turquoise after it's dry. It's hard to take it off, but you can cover it. You might need a couple of coats, but you can do it. And I'm looking at my turquoise and my turquoise can use a second coat. So I think before I go back to doing the rest of the piece, I'm gonna go back and do a little extra turquoise on it because you see it looks like you could see through the color and I don't like that, but it's up to you. I'm gonna go back and just do a quickie second coat on it and it gives it a lot better coverage. Okay, I did a quickie second coat so that you can't see through my color anymore. Looks a lot better with the second coat. Okay, now I do have a little bit of blue in the stripes, but we're gonna do that later because I want it really to dry. Like I said, I don't wanna do a color over a color until it's dry. Now I'm gonna to switch to my bigger brush. And um, you have this brush here that you can use. I have another one here I'm gonna use. It's about the same size. And now you can do the rest of the areas. And I'm going over the eyes because I'll go back later and I'll put white on the eyes again. So everything else is in the purple. So it's the turquoise and the purple as your base coats on the entire piece. And remember, don't dip for more paint in your brush until you spread out what you've put in your brush. Keep going back and make sure that you have it all pulled out nice and smooth. 
and it's almost painting it dry. It goes on nice and smooth. If you put it on like that and you leave it like that, it's, it's gonna dry with lumps in the paint. You have to really pull your paint out. And go over where the gold is gonna go. Like I said before, the gold will go on top of the purple or the red or wherever you wanna put it. The gold will be the last color that you use the gold and the red. If you're gonna do dots, I would do them last also, or do them and let it sit for a while, because when you do a dot, I do them with the handle of a brush, I do them with the back end of the brush, and they stay wet for quite a while. So many times when we do dots on pieces, we're in a hurry and we go back and try to touch up and we smear the dots. So I'm suggesting that you, if you're gonna do any dots on his body like I did on this one, let those dots dry for quite a while before you go back and do anything else, or do the dots last. Do the gold and do the dots. Now, if you have a bigger brush at home, you have something else, you, you know, you can use it and it'll go a little faster back here. But like I said, I don't think you should have to be in a hurry. You could take your time and do a nice, neat job. Make sure you get in that little bank slot. These are banks and you could fill them up with money, save money in there. And I always make sure that I get in that little slot so that I don't see the white. I mean, you don't have to paint inside the piece. Nobody's gonna see in there, but they will see inside that little bank slot. So I would paint that. This is really a pretty color purple. I have um, quite a few other videos of ceramics on YouTube. So if you're interested, you could take a look at some of the other ones too gives you other ideas, and I may just say, even though you don't have that item, I may just say something that will, you would use on the dragon, you know, so you could look at the other videos, too. There's a lot for children, there's some for adults also. done. You see how much easier it is now because I edged it with the small brush. I don't have to worry about getting close to the turquoise with the purple. I did that first and I'm letting that dry. So if I need to go back and touch up because I went out of the lines, it gives it time to dry while I'm doing the rest of the piece. Now, I'm not going to do the bottom right now, but you should do the bottom. I was told that um, nothing is ever completely finished unless the bottom is done too. That's the proper way to do it. I just want to get it to a point where I can do some of the other colors on it and you can see what I'm talking about. Now, so it dries. You see how fast it dries that I'm actually able to hold it, him by his head right now because I did that first. And then I go back and touch up little white spots that I see as I'm going forward. I, I backtrack and keep looking at it, and make sure I don't have white areas. This color covers really well. It's a beautiful color. All I have to do now is his foot here, and I'm done. Oh, but you see, I've missed spots between his toes on the other foot. So like I said, I keep going back and double checking Keep looking him over, turn him upside down, make sure you didn't mix, miss under his wings, and you'll always see little white spots that you can go back and touch up. Okay, so I have, oh, there's another little white spot. But you have time to do that, you know. It's, you have the paints at home, which is nice, and you can touch it up at any time, even if it's tomorrow, so. Okay, so he's got his purple on him. What a pretty. It's a, it's a little different purple than the one I did here. This one I did here a while ago, and they discontinued colors on me, but I love this purple. This is a beautiful color. Okay, let's wash that brush out. And like I said, don't bang it on the bottom of the bowl. Swish it in the water and 
dry it on your paper towel. I do it twice because sometimes the paint gets caught up in what we call the ferrules of the brush. And what you can do is when you go to the sink after you put a little soap in the brush, you grab a hold of the tip of the brush hairs and you wiggle. You push in like this and that helps to get the paint out of that uh, area where the metal meets the hairs of the, of the brush. So, okay. So now what I'm going to do, I guess I'm going to do the red. Put a little red out. And I'm going to tap some of that red onto the pads of his feet. Not the dots yet, but onto the pads of his feet. So I'm going to use the brush that you have now for that. And um, I kind of did it in a, in a meshy, oops, I'm getting purple all over me, so something's wet, in a, in a very open, meshy kind of a way. So I just kind of tapped it on because if you paint it on, it's going to be hard to cover. So tap, 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 tap. That's the pads of his, the, you know, of his feet. And if you tap it on, it covers really well. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Look how nice that covered. Okay, and that's tap, tap, tap. This is what I'm doing. Just tapping with that square brush that you have. You don't do the other one. And don't tap straight down. Tap with the side of the brush. And turn the brush over. You see what I'm doing here? Try to do it so you can see it but then I can't see what I'm doing, so I have to keep tilting it toward me, sorry. Okay. And you can do a neater job than I'm doing. Okay, got the two of them done. All right, so now again, swish, swish, swish the brush, to clean it out, dry it on the paper towel, and we'll go to the um, maybe the little bit of the blue that I put. I'm trying to think what order to do this in. No, I'm going to go do some of the white in the eyes. So then when I take the blue out, I can do the blue on the eye. So I'm going to paint the whole center part of the eye in white. The whole area of the eye in white because the other colors can go on top of it. See what I'm saying? I'm doing the whole little circle. It's like an oval in the white. So we'll let that dry, and then I'll go to the blue. Okay, so I put the whites in the eyes, and I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to put a little bit of the blue out. I'm just going to work from my cap. You have, you have those little pods you can work from. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like put a little bit of blue in between the sections of the turquoise. Can you see it? It just gives it a little bit of accent and, and um, emphasizes the area somewhat. So just a little bit of blue, very little. I got purple on it. Now you could do this with the purple. It doesn't have to be the blue. It's your piece, and you determine what colors you want where. Okay, can you see the blue that I did in there? See it? Just very, very, I just, I just hardly tap very, very little into the pointy brush. And then you just kind of go across those areas those indentations that are in his chest area. And I don't keep dipping, like one brush load did a lot of it. It's hard to see, but it is there, okay? Again, wash my brush out. Now, um, okay, for the eyes, I'm gonna take the back end of my brush, the handle of the brush, I'm gonna put some blue on the handle of the brush, the handle. And I'm going to put it onto the eye and make a circle with the handle. Can you see what I did just there? So I'm using the back end of the brush and I put it down on the eye and I circle it a little bit. Go around in a circle with the handle of the brush and it gives me somewhat of a circle. Okay? And you know, you might have to adjust it. I'm going to go back and make this one a little bigger because the other one's a little bigger. But I'm doing it with the handle. I'm not doing it with the hairs of the brush. I'm doing it with the handle of the brush. 
Okay, so now that has to dry before you can put the black on top of it. So you, you work from the back to the front. So you work with the white, then you work with the blue, then you work with the black. Close that one up. But now I'm gonna to go to the gold. And the gold, I didn't paint it on. I kind of dry brushed it on, which means you put a little bit in your brush, you tap some of it out on your paper towel, and you highlight with it. You go against the grain, see this against the grain and so the purple stays in the crevices so I'm not painting the whole entire wing but you can but this is how I put mine on so I still have a little bit of the purple showing through now let me just show you see what I did there so what I'm doing is I'm taking the brush and I'm going up against the grain the grain is going this way so I'm going against the grain and going that way, so I keep some of the purple showing there. Okay, and I did that on the fronts and the backs of both wings. But you can paint them solid too. I said this is my adaptation, my, my vision of the piece, but you're the artist and you could paint it however you desire. Just watch those eyes because you put the eyes on with the handle of the brush, they will stay wet for quite a while. And as long as they're shiny like that and they're wet, don't try to put the black over them. And if you do the gold a second time, it makes it pop a little bit more. Okay, so now you could see how I did the gold. See, I tried to keep some of the purple showing in between it and that's by, by taking the brush flat and going across it opposite direction of the lines going up and down you go the opposite way so i'm going to do that on the other wing now figure out where to hold them so i don't get them okay go here now i got a little bit of gold onto my purple where i don't want it so later on i will go back with my small brush and touch up my purple Okay, so there's his wings. Now, basically, the, the um, mane down his back is done the same way. A little bit of paint in the brush. And go against the grain. You can see that. And it keeps some of the purple showing. And you do that by putting a little bit into your brush and taking some of it out. See how I did that? Go against the grain. Go all the way down to his, his foot. The gold goes all the way down to his foot. And if you go out of the lines, you go back after with your small brush and you touch up your purple way, and if you got gold where you don't want it, like I did here. So I'll go back with my small brush and my purple, because my purple is dry, so, and my gold was put on very thin. So I just go back over it, and it covers it right up where I went out of the lines. Okay, got that? I see a little area here where I could touch up. All right, so there you go. Now, the other thing is, I think my eyes are still a little wet, but when they do dry, I'm gonna be doing them with the back end of the brush, the black in the center of the blue. Okay, now I did it down toward his face, so he looks like he's looking down. Let me see if I can do it, but like I said, if yours is wet, don't do it until it's really dry. I'm gonna to try to do it so you can see what I, what I mean. Take the handle of the brush again, and you have the palette to dip, dip the handle, not the hairs, the handle, and put it right, see that? I put the black toward the bottom of the blue, okay? And that's wet now, so be very, very, very careful with that. I believe I did, um, I did a little black line in his mouth also, which you can do, that you need to do with the tip of the brush hairs. And here's another little trick. 
you can do the line in his mouth with a black marker, a black marker like a, a Sharpie or a, an ultra fine point marker. So if you can't draw a straight line with the brush, you can get your marker and do it with a marker. And that works very well too. You can also put a little accent of black in his nose. I didn't do it on the one that I did the sample of there, but I did it on this one. See in his nose and his mouth? Okay. Now you could tip his ears with a little gold. Um, you could, like I said, you can do whatever you want. And you can do gold dots instead of uh, red dots. So that's the only thing that I have left to do on this one are the red dots. And they're very simple, just like we did the eyes. Oh, and I, oh, okay, another thing I did with the red is I put lines in his toes, so you can put some red lines in his toes. And you can also do that with a red marker. If you have a red marker, you can do that also. Okay, so um, I'm gonna do turquoise dots on this one. So you see the red dots on this one. On, and, okay, I'll turn them around so you can see it. And don't put them very close together because he'll look like a polka dotted piece. I just wanted them like a little design on him. So take the back end of the brush and do a dot back into the brush. If the paint is really wet, they may run. So be careful how much paint you put in your brush. And then you just do the polka dots. See how far apart I'm spacing them? Okay, don't do them too close together. You could do some purple, some red. I like the uh, turquoise dots on him, are cute too. Okay. All right, so this pretty much takes you through what I have done with the piece. Uh, in that little strip of paper that I gave you in with the kits that you received. My email is on there. If you want to send me a picture of your finished product, I would love to see it. I want to thank all of you for picking up these kits and choosing to do ceramics. This has been a passion of mine my whole life, and I want to spread my knowledge to all of you, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So um, thanks again, and I hope to see you soon. And if you have any questions also, please email me and send me a picture of your finished product. Thank you so much.